So it's 3 a.m. and suddenly your brain goes, hey, remember when you called your teacher mom in fourth grade? And now you're physically cringing at something that happened 20 years ago that literally nobody else remembers. Look, this isn't just you being weird. But your brain is running an ancient error detection program that won't let you delete the files. So today we're diving into why your brain tortures you with embarrassing memories that everyone else forgot. I'll show you the social survival mechanism that makes these memories sticky, why your brain rehearses them at night, and there's this fascinating thing about why other people's embarrassing moments don't haunt them like yours haunt you. Plus the counterintuitive technique that actually stops the cringe spiral. Let's get into it. Hey, I'm Gregory from the Brain Academy. So last week this guy in my program goes, Gregory, I still think about tripping at my own wedding reception. That was 12 years ago. My wife hardly remembers it. So why can't I let it go? Well, because your brain thinks that embarrassing moment might kill you. No, really. See, your brain treats social rejection as a literal survival threat. And embarrassing moments, they're catalogued as near-death experiences that require constant review to prevent future death. Once you understand this, the 3 a.m. cringe attacks start to make much more sense. So here's what's actually happening. Research from UCLA in 2020 shows that social pain and physical pain activate the same brain regions, specifically the anterior cingulate cortex and the right ventral prefrontal cortex. Think about our ancestors. You see, being embarrassed meant potentially being rejected by the tribe. Being rejected meant death. No tribe, no survival. So your brain evolved to treat embarrassing moments like touching a hot stove. Remember this forever so it never happens again. Now, Matthew Lieberman at UCLA found that social rejection activates the pain matrix in your brain more intensely than physical pain in, in some cases. When you remember that embarrassing moment, your brain is literally re-experiencing the pain. And here's what's wild. A, a 2019 study from the University of British Columbia found that embarrassing memories gets what's called priority encoding. So your brain marks them as critical survival information and stores them in, in multiple regions for redundancy. I mean, you can't remember what you had for lunch last Tuesday, right? But you remember exactly how it felt when you waved back at someone who, who wasn't waving at you in 2007. And that's not random, you see. Your brain decided that lunch was irrelevant, but that wave might contain life-saving information. Now, why do these memories attack at night? Well, research from Northwestern University in 2021 found that during REM sleep, your brain rehearses threatening scenarios to, to prepare for future dangers. But here's a problem. Your brain can't tell the difference between a tiger attack and calling someone the wrong name. So a threat is a threat. So while you're trying to sleep, your brain is running emergency drills. What if we get embarrassed again? Let's review all previous embarrassments to prevent future ones. And every time you rehearse these memories, you actually strengthen them. Neuroscientists at MIT discovered in 2018 that recalling an embarrassing memory activates the same neural pathways as experiencing it originally. So you're not remembering the event, you're actually reliving it. See, each recall adds another layer of emotional encoding. It's like saving the same file over and over, but each time it gets larger and more detailed. That embarrassing thing you did in middle school, you've probably thought about it 500 times, making it 500 times stronger than the original memory. The memory isn't fading because you keep refreshing it. You're accidentally training your brain that this is important. This does matter. We must keep this file active. Look, here's what nobody tells you. Research from Cornell University, Thomas Gilovich's famous studies, found that we massively overestimate how much others notice and remember our embarrassing moments. They called it the spotlight effect. They had students wear embarrassing Barry Manilow t-shirts to class, and the students estimated that 50% of their classmates would notice and remember. The actual number was about like 25%, and a week later, almost nobody remembered. But your brain doesn't care about statistics. A 2022 study from Harvard found that we estimate others think about our embarrassing moments three to eight times more than they actually do. So your brain is convinced everyone remembers your mistakes because your brain remembers them so vividly. And here's the kicker. When researchers asked people to recall someone else's embarrassing moments from the past year, most couldn't think of a single one. But their own embarrassing moments? Oh, they could list dozens. So think about it. Can you remember the last time someone else did something embarrassing? 
Probably not, right? But your brain is convinced everyone has a detailed file of every time you've messed up. They don't. They're too busy obsessing over their own embarrassing moments. So here's what's actually worse. Research from the University of Cambridge in 2019 found that intrusive embarrassing memories are often incomplete. And your brain keeps replaying them, trying to find like a better ending. The technique? Complete the memory, but not by reimagining it going well. That doesn't work. But instead, add what happened after. See, when you cringe at an embarrassing memory, you stop at the worst part. The, the, the trip, the, the wrong name, the, the awkward silence. But what happened next? You got up, people moved on, life continued, right? So researchers at King's College London in 2021 tested this. When people followed their embarrassing memory through its actual boring conclusion, you know, and then I went home and watched TV. Well, the memory lost its emotional charge. Your brain keeps replaying it because the file is marked incomplete, threat unresolved. When you add the boring ending, your brain goes, oh, we survived, threat resolved, file closed. Try this. Next time an embarrassing memory hits, don't stop at the cringe, keep going. And then I walked to my car and then I drove home and then I had dinner. Boring, mundane, safe. The memory doesn't disappear, but it stops being marked as an active threat requiring constant review. Your brain finally gets the message. We survived this. We can archive it. So I'm curious, what's the embarrassing moment that your brain won't let go of? The ones that still makes you physically cringe? Drop it in the comments. I guarantee sharing it will make you realize how not a big deal it actually was. And honestly, these are always hilarious. Now, if you want to dive deeper into how your brain processes social threats and, and how to stop the cringe spiral, we cover this extensively in the Brain Academy at brainacademy.com. Brain out. Sharp.